So we have another one one model. So P1 0.81, theta 1, 0.62, we used plus V1, that was the notation correct. Plus V1, Y2 minus 1, when we first derived everything. Um, so V1 in this case would be minus 0.81, um, theta 1 would be 0.62. Our goal is to find the approximate, approximate MA4 representation. So what is that characteristic polynomial on the left-hand side or the AR side, uppercase P of P? One minus. Yeah, we just keep it as it. Um, but in terms of the unknown one that we defined and derived, we use plus P1 and plus P2. Yes? Um, can you okay, so that is our. Characteristic polynomial in terms of the backwards of the AR side and the MA side. We know phi over B divided by theta over B is pi over B, right? We'll give you the AR infinity representation. Um, psi over B, on the other hand, is simply theta over B. <laughs> Divided by uppercase B. I didn't mean to say theta over B, theta of B divided by uppercase B of B. So I can split here and do 1 minus 0.81B divided by 1 plus 0.62B and go through that entire process, but that is unnecessary. Because we spent time deriving an MA infinity representation. Yes, we had a recursive equation um, while we took an R01 and expressed it um, in terms of MA infinity, and we got all uh, the psi coefficients that way. So we have psi naught to be equal to one. Psi one theta one minus p one psi k minus p one raised k minus one psi one. So we can easily find psi one. Psi one is 0.62 minus of minus 0.81, which would give us. 1.43. And the recursive equation works for k greater than or equal to 2. Of course, I could have written an expression in a recursive equation that starts from, you know, some normal, but didn't want to. Um, psi 2 would be negative b1 raised to 2 minus 1 multiplied by 1.43, which is negative of negative v1 as 0.81 multiplied by 1.43. And what do we get? One point six zero. One point one six. Okay. One point one six. Psi three would be negative v one raised to excuse me three minus one, which would be two. Point 
points A point square times 1.43. What do we get? Eight over ten, eight, seven, four, eight, point nine something. Point nine four. Side rule would be minus P1 raised three, one point four three. That would be point eight one cubed. Multiply it by 1.3, and that would equal to 0.7 776. So, oh. and I can keep one guess, right? The main purpose of having this recurs recursion is that I don't want to divide each and every time, I can just use the recursive equation. But do keep in mind if I have an arm of two one, this is going to change because the equation will change. Same with arm of one two, arm of two two, and so forth. I've got about sine one, sine one, sine two, sine three, and sine four, which would mean y t is epsilon t because sine naught is one, sine one. Epsilon t minus one, side two, epsilon t minus two, side three, epsilon t minus three, side four, epsilon t minus four. The approximate MA4 representation it is not exact. Approximate because this would work exactly if I go all the way up to infinity, but we don't have time to do that. Um, are we clear? That is the equivalent NA4 representation. Now, what is psi 29? Psi 29 would simply be equal to 0 0.81 raised 28 multiplied by 1.43. I got 0 0.0039. 0 0.0039. Good. So part A is done, part B is done. Next question to ask is the model causal? How do we determine causality? Look here, one that we value as we less than one. So, for which side? The AR side. The AR side. The AR side, since the absolute value of phi one is. Let's have one, it is causal. This is equivalent to saying that the root lies outside the unit cell. By root, I mean root of the characteristic polynomial for the AR side. So it is causal. This is great, and it's easy here because it's an AR1 case. But if it is AR2, AR3, all of those we have to solve to determine to see if the roots lie outside the unit circle. If the roots are real, not a problem. If they are complex, if both real and imaginary part lie outside the unit circle, not a problem. But if one of them lies inside, for instance, we have 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8
plus 0.25, we want to check the magnitude and see if the magnitude lies outside the inner circle. Clearly, this will right? 1.8 squared plus 0.2 um, squared. So it is causal. Is it inverse? Yes, so maybe. 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 So here, invertibility comes from the AR side, causality, excuse me, invertibility comes from the MA side, causality comes from the AR side. So, so this is the MA side? Yes. Okay. Right, I'm looking at the MA side, the coefficient there. Um, it's less than one, absolute value is less than one. So it is invertible. Equivalent is the same, the roots of the curve is polynomial on the right hand side would lie outside the unit circle. Just with those two conditions, one could answer the last part. Is it stationary? Yeah. Yes. It's causal, it's invertible. Then it is stationary. So if one of them is true, then it's not stationary. We want a series to be both causal and invertible for us to have stationarity. What is another way to determine if a series is stationary? Well, if you do k equals infinity, it must approach the earth. What must approach the earth? It's the sum. The sum. Sum of what? The infinite. The absolute sum? Uh, yes, of what? <laughs> <laughs> Infinite sum, absolute sum, k of it, um, the psi model. The psi, the model of the psi, just the psi. The psi. The psi. The psi. The psi. The psi. As k approaches infinity, approach it in a different way. So the absolute sum of the coefficients must be less than infinity. It is equivalent to saying as k approaches infinity, psi k approaches zero, right? So as you make k bigger and bigger and bigger, the psi values become zero, which would imply that if you take the absolute value and add them all together, it will definitely be less than infinity. That property is called, what is that fancy phrase that you guys like? Absolute geometry. Absolutely <laughs> so good. Um, <clears throat> so, absolutely summable would imply stationarity. Uh, and other ways to check is by looking at causality, invertibility, uh, convergence of sign. Of course, I can find the roots of that fourth degree polynomial and determine if the roots lie outside the unit circle. Right? They are going to write. I, I don't even have to try here because, based on the other conditions that are satisfied, I can go back or go in reverse and conclude that the rules are likely to lie outside the circle. Good.